Hey everyone, it's Gene again, and um, trying to revamp my my page, and I've been through a lot over these past couple of years, and um, and I just wanted to share share my experiences with you, and hopefully it resonates with you. Um, and um, for the last few years, uh, I've actually been a hospice chaplain, and it's probably one of the most one of the most fulfilling positions I've ever been in. Um, I've been in ministry for many years, right? I've been a pastor, planted a church, um, but there's nothing like being a hospice chaplain. And what is a hospice chaplain? And a hospice chaplain is essentially, or they call them spiritual counselors now. Um, they kind of use them uh, uh, or intertwine them both um, to kind of lighten, lighten, the the titles of a chaplain because whenever you associate yourself with uh, the title chaplain you you um you associate it with um you're dying or there's death or sadness etc uh, or it could just be associated with the military chaplain like the other day my wife and i and kids were at uh, sam's club and um two evangelists or two ministers uh, or, or evangelists as i I should say came came up to us and um i told them that i was a chaplain and one of them said oh you're in the military it's like oh no i'm in i'm, I'm in hospice uh so what is a hospice chaplain or hospice uh, spiritual counselor uh we essentially um provide comfort and care through uh spirituality and emotional support uh to those who are who are transitioning meaning do they are they have a prognosis of maybe six months or less to live and our job um essentially is to be with them and to be present with them um and and presence is one of the most important skill to have in this ministry or and i think in anything right whether it be with your children uh, with your wife with your spouse with your husband uh with your partner um with friends uh, or just being with people i think presence is one of the most important skills that you can learn in life um and in i've been doing this for over four years now and um i used to think right i used to think when you go into hospice or you when you when you when you're a spiritual counselor or chaplain um that you do all the talking right because as a pastor that's all you know what to do is you are you are providing information right you're providing information as a pastor or predominantly known as a pastor you're on the pulpit you're preaching um you're doing a sermon and i love doing those um and and you do some spiritual care as well do some counseling but most of the time you are doing the talking and in chaplaincy I, I I think of it as you are retaining information. You are um, extracting information even in the most vulnerable moments of someone's life. Um, and, and to say the least, I, I, it, you can never get used to it, right? Um, because you are entering people's lives right where they are. Um, and I think being present is most important in any skill if anything if there, if there's anything that you come out of this 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 video is is being present with people right um and and i've learned because i love to talk i've learned in hospice chaplaincy that you do less talking and more listening um and there's questions like have you ever wondered how being present can transform your life and, you know i've learned that the most powerful spiritual growth happens in most fragile moments um, and it's one of the most rewarding jobs that I've ever had. Um, and, and there are times where it's very hard, um, because you, because I, I am there with patients who are, you know, who, who are going to pass pretty soon. And some of them have esoteric questions and spiritual questions, and some of them just want somebody to know that they are being present with them and that they are um, with them. Because a lot of these patients are alone, right? A lot of these patients, um, the, the, the company 
that they see the most uh, is the care team, right? It could be the nurses, it could be a social worker, and it could be us, us spiritual counselors. Um, and and I think uh, you know, the, and the purpose of this video is just to let you know that <clears throat> that uh, how hospice chaplains is how how that that. You know that type of work is out there and for those who are in ministry and maybe are looking for a change and have been in ministry for a very long time as a pastor or a minister or as a reverend or pastor in a huge church big church small church medium church whatever it may be uh i, I f i'm finding that they are there are pastors who may have been burnt out right or who whatever the story may be they often come into chaplaincy and um and and i uh, when I was in seminary, I was attending Azusa Pacific uh, University to get my master's in divinity. I did not know what a chaplain was. I didn't even know it existed. Because when you go into seminary, you only think that the only type of job that you're going to get is a pastor, right? Or a minister, or you become this, uh, or, or plan a church, right? Or you do some type of business that is, is Christian faith based, or I mean, or faith based, I should say. Um, and, and, uh, I remember uh, one of my professors uh, telling me that you should look into chaplaincy, and uh, I was telling them, I was telling him that I, I, I didn't want to go into the military. Although I I am open to the military, right, and and that's just a whole different level of ministry. But you should, you know, he's like, oh no, there's hospital chaplains and there's uh, there's hospice chaplains. So I ended up applying for a position when I was in seminary, and and thankfully I I I uh, I got the position. I and it changed my life, right? It changed the trajectory of how I look at ministry. It changed the trajectory of how I th see my theology and uh, how I see um, um, uh, how I see people and I see how I see the world, right? Because when you step into hospice, knowing that they're they're going to pass in the next three days, four days, four weeks, four months, whatever the date may be, um, it, it, it you cannot help but remind yourself of how grateful you are for life um for for breath right um and and that's that's the beauty of this work that i do i get to be with people um from different faith backgrounds that's another that's another uh another subject but it's just being with people from different cultures and different backgrounds right but being grounded of in my faith right and I, I truly believe in in the life and teaching of jesus and that's how i try to follow my life and try to instill in my kids and my family life uh, but when you go out and meet different people and different patients from different backgrounds um you start to realize that god is much bigger than i think in my my own faith circle right and you start to learn from other people's faiths and um and you start to listen to other people's stories and and uh, a lot of them may not be in the same faith background that i have but a lot of them are very faith grounded and very strong in their faith a lot more than most in my faith background and myself sometimes right um and and all that to say is is hospice chaplaincy has just been a a blessing in my life um, and it's been such um, a life-changing experience day to day, right? It's every day. It forces you because it, it takes yourself out, right? Um, and I'm, I'm, if I could be candid, I like hearing myself talk, right? But this job has taught me um, that, uh, that you have to take your ego out. You have to take self out um, and in and, and order to connect in order to be able to um, bring that present moment healing to that person, right? Um, and and this is a skill that I thought I've I've, I've handled, and I thought I've I'm, I'm good at listening, uh, but most of the time I'm not, right? Uh, because it's just I'm, I'm, I was learning, and then we have to go through as as chaplains too. Um, not all hospice chaplains require this, but um, if you want to be like a board certified chaplain, you do have to take clinical pastoral education, um, which is short for CPE, um, which there is that clinical aspect of it. Right. And the 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 psychology behind it um, and the training behind chaplaincy. 
Um, so I think it's very important um, to go through those trainings, right, as as a chaplain, and um, to 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 continue to to uh, strengthen your skill. Um, but I think one of the things that's important um, in in chaplaincy is just the the, the sacredness of presence. Right? It, we call it the ministry of presence. And presence is not saying that you're just there um, and you're not doing anything, right? No, presence, actually, no. There's a lot of healing when you are just there for somebody, right? We have no agenda. You have no, uh, you're not trying to preach. You're not trying to create a sermon. You're not trying to give out information. But ministry of presence is what we say. Um, being with the person and being uh, being present, right? In everything they're saying. And somehow tr figuring out, um, not figuring out, but tr being really in tune with their feelings and their emotions and um, the things that they are going through in life. And that's what I found as, um, and it's still an ongoing practice, right? Uh, and, and what I've learned in my CPE is being able to sit in silence, right? Because what happens in silence, um, if you're anything like me, my ego would say, I cannot handle this silence. I need to say something, right? But most often or not, what I found is when you just sit in silence, uh, at least with the people I've talked to uh, and the patients that I've talked to, that silence. There's this, there's, there's, there's something that's spiritual that happens uh, when you allow just the silence to, um, to, to bring healing to that person, right? Who has just talked about their life, talked about their vulnerabilities and talked about their proclivities and their guilt or whatever it may be that they're going through at that time and moment that they just needed somebody to hear their story. And um, knowing that the other person is there to really just listen and be present, even in the silence. And most often than not, what happens when you are just silent after that that powerful moment of them being vulnerable with you is that silence brings healing into their life. And oftentimes it's like, wow, they would say to me, I just needed to get that off my chest. And I'm so thankful that you, you, you didn't have to say anything. Um, and it's just allowing whatever they have just told you, whatever they just have said to you, simmer. Um, and, and in that brings relief, brings um, a load off of their shoulder that whatever burdens that they may have been going through or, and they just let it out. And you can just hear this fresh breath of air or a big sigh of relief knowing that presence and listening is a powerful tool, not just as a, as, 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 as a hospice chaplain, right? But even in our day-to-day -day lives, right? And, and I try to practice this with my spouse. Um, and, and it's not the, it's, it's, it's funny because we, we always say this um, in ministry or just in our work, right? It's easier to do our work but when it comes to actually apply the things that we want to do into our personal life, it's a lot harder, right? And um, and I'm I'm trying to do that every single day. My wife knows, um, but yeah, I just wanted to just share with you. Um, I hope that resonates with you somehow. And I and my goal here is just to get in the in the in the rhythm again of speaking and talking, um, and just to somehow in my experience as uh, in hospice that um, it will somehow resonate with you 
um, in your own day-to-day life, in your own spirituality, in your own spiritual growth? Because at least the people I've spoken with, are, are like the hundreds of people and patients that I spoke with, uh, the, one of the common denominators that I always hear is they, they just feel spiritually dry. And a lot of them have been involved in ministry and church for a very long time, but for some reason they just fell off or they just, uh, they're not as, um, they're not as involved anymore right uh, because of whatever the church ha- whatever the, the church did in their lives and uh, but there's a lot of people that our that 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 is seeking for some type of faith and some type of spirituality because they have this sense that there is a higher a higher power out there a divine or a god um, that is somehow um, uh, um, in this world um, and I, my goal for this channel and my goal for th- these videos is to somehow help you get out of the, get out of the spiritual, spiritual, um, um, dryness as, as, as you may say, or you, and you, and you may be seeking, right? You may be seeking, um, and you may be going through a lot too. You may be going through some maybe f- vulnerable, fragile moments in your life, and you just may may not see whatever you're doing as a faith practice not working anymore. Whether you're a Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, um, I I believe that you you go through a spiritual dryness in all of that, right? But there are spiritual practices. There are um, there are are, are uh, different ways for you to reconnect with the divine, reconnect with God, and I, I truly believe that, right? I think, um, and and I say to I say to you that is this, uh, and I'm just speaking, you know, I, I, I I'm really just speaking uh, for myself um, and speaking out loud, and just uh, another outlet for me to, you know, uh, say my my thoughts. Um, but give yourself some grace, um, and I just want to remind you that. All of that is all part of your journey. And what happens is because we try to put labels on things, whether it's good or bad, um, uh, with your feeling in the sense of like, I feel spiritual dry. Maybe I'm not so close to God. So we start to label and start to have all these judgments towards ourself. But I want to remind you, because I go through that. I still go through that, even in this practice, right? Um, Even in the ministry that I'm in right now, I still go through those things. Um, but I have to remind myself to give myself grace and to remind myself that all of that is all part of your spiritual growth. All of that is all part of your spiritual journey. There is no uh, contrary, right? Contrary to what the world believes as far as like, because uh, I'm all into the, the motivational, inspirational stuff, right? But and, and there's this concept of know your end goal in mind. But in the spiritual life, uh, and this may sound... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's controversial. What, whatever. But it, there is no end goal in spirituality. You're constantly gonna grow. You're constantly gonna go through this process, right? Whatever faith background you're in, um, in this life, in this world, and uh, where we're at right now, in this present moment, right, um, is all we have, right? This moment. If you're watching this right now, this is this is your present moment right um so you 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 deal with the things that you have to deal with today and whatever happened yesterday uh thankfully it's a new day right but spirituality and faith it's going to be a constant practice right and i'm here to remind you of that um and 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 to to let off the load of judgment to yourself uh maybe you're not part of a faith community and that's okay you maybe you're in the season you're just in the season of of being by yourself and not trying to be trying to connect with different churches trying not to connect with different faith communities maybe because you've been part of it for so long and and you just want to kind of find faith on your own and that is beautiful and that is i think the most faith filled thing that you can do uh for your own self and for your own spiritual life i'm not saying don't be alone be alone in it um and don't be in no and and don't uh uh, isolate yourself that's not what i'm saying right you still have your friends um that may not have may, may they not may not go uh, to the same church as you or not even be part of a faith community but as long as you have people around you right and that's something that i'm still kind of wrestling with right and i th- feel like i'm always in a season of just this in this isolation and um and and trying to find the right tribe of uh 
uh, uh, to to at least be my whole self right um and that's a whole different subject as well because right uh, and i just heard this other pastor say um people expect you to be a pastor or the spiritual leader right and so when they uh, i always get it's like oh you don't really come off as a a, a pastor or a chaplain and it's like oh good like i don't want to right because i have i'm just i'm just me i'm just normal i'm tr trying to be as normal as possible um and not trying to be this person of like having these these titles right you know i'm just trying to be um as real as i can there, don't get me wrong there are times where i am have this decorum or this properness but most of the time when i'm with my family or whoever i'm with with my friends and i'm comfortable with them i'm just me right i'm just this loud i love joking around i love you know uh just having a fun time uh, that's just who i am but there is a moment in time where i am proper and decorum them and speaking you know in a certain way yes there are times for that um so i've had to learn to let that go right i have to learn not to just there's gonna be people that don't like you and that is fine and there's people that are not gonna like what i'm saying and that's fine right and that's probably why uh, uh you know it, it took me a while to just be comfortable um and and this is what this this video and these channels i'm hoping that can give you some courage and to give you some inspiration that if i can do it or whatever you're going through right now um to not give yourself judgment right and and to give yourself some grace that like like me and like everybody else in this world we're just all trying to uh, live day by day and and um, we can only try our best, right? Especially in the spirituality, faith, um, faith realm, right? Um, especially if you grew up in a, in a more strict religi religiosity to where you're still trying to unlearn a lot of things, right? So you're still trying to, you know, the judgment and the guilt, you're still trying to get rid of that. That takes, it, it, it's taking me a lot of time because you can, you can imagine at five years old, five years old and you're b being shaped by this type of theology and this type of upbringing, um, it takes time, right? To unlearn that. And there are good people out there that will help you do that, right? There are good faith communities out there that are trying to change that and trying to change the narrative that we do. If you do believe in a God, you do, do believe in a divine uh, power, that there is this divine loving God that cares for you, that forgives you, and that will redeem you. Um, and, I, I, and it just takes time to learn that, right? But most importantly... Um, is to give yourself grace to um, catch yourself giving yourself judgment and immediately try as much as you can um, to hold on to that judgment and just picture it that you're just throwing it away at that moment um, and I hope this resonates with you I'm gonna come up with more videos and um, and and a lot of my experiences that I'm sharing as a chaplain and um, because, and it's important just in life, um, and, and I'll, I'll probably save that for the next video is what I've learned from the patients that I've talked to, of uh, the most important things in life. And you'll be surprised and you may even know this intuitively already, right? Um, but you may be surprised. It is not your job. It is not how much money you have in the bank. It is not how big your house is. It is not how much cars you have how much stuff you have how much things you have it is quite quite the opposite at the end of life of, of what's important and what they wish they could um take back you know um and and yeah so stay tuned for that i'll put that out and i hope this resonates with you uh, blessings to you and um and grace to you as well